Welcome to Ditch Auto, it's Jared, and today I have a new lens, so it's a happy day. I have the new Sony FE 24-70 f2.8 G Master lens. Now, I'm super excited about this lens for a couple of reasons. One of them is definitely not the price, it's an expensive lens, but the reason I'm excited is because when I was shooting Canon, this was my go-to lens, not the Sony one, but the Canon equivalent, the 2472.8 and I were inseparable. I was always shooting with that lens because it was the perfect combination of focal lengths for me and f2.8 is a fast enough of a lens for me to shoot in pretty much all environments. So I was super excited when Sony came out and said, you know, we've got these, these new G Master series lenses, which are the top of the line lenses that they're providing for the E-mount series cameras. Um, and so I got really amped up and of course ordered one and here it is. So we're gonna unbox it and then I'm gonna uh, kind of give you some initial thoughts on build quality and everything. And then I'm gonna go out and take some pictures with it and give you some samples of those photos uh, for you to look at. So this lens is expensive. It is way more expensive than the 2470 f4 lens, which is actually what I'm filming with on an a7s right now. So you could buy two of those, I believe, for the price of this lens. So is the difference worth it? Is it worth getting this expensive lens? Those are the types of things I want to find out. Uh, of course, you know, having just purchased this. So it comes with a nice carrying case. Here's the strap, um, really nice carrying case. This is something that Sony has done with uh, high e higher end lenses for their A, a mount lenses and whatnot. And of course, you know, Canon and Nikon with some of the more expensive lenses give you a case. So some of the articles that I've read discussing the whole ecosystem that is the Sony E-mount, Alpha E-mount series, has been around camera size and whatnot. And I mean, this is a pretty beefy lens. To be honest, it's maybe just a tad bit longer than the Canon, than Canon's counterpart. And this is a pretty heavy lens. Uh, I, I can't necessarily remember because it's been a, over a year since I had my 2470 L series um, two lens from Canon. And I believe it was a little bit lighter than this. It might've been around the same. So initially I'm liking the fact that there is a lock on this lens. It's just a safety feature being able to lock your lens. I typically am always shooting with my lens hood on. So it comes with a nice lens hood. It is kind of made of a, a plastic material and has a quick release on it to remove it. I, I don't shoot with my lens hood all the time because I need to. It's just simply, I'm one of those people that would forget my lens hood. I don't, I wouldn't know where I'd put it and then I would need it and I wouldn't have it. So we'll just set it off to the side. So this is a beautiful looking lens, just really nice glass. The focal ring is not connected in a mechanical sense. So unpowered, you're not going to have anything happening here. It's uh, electronic. And that's been kind of a challenge with some of the earlier Sony lenses is that the electronic adjustment of your focus, it lags a little bit. And when shooting video with these lenses, it just doesn't produce that, uh, that good of an experience. However, in some of the demo videos that I've seen of this lens online, it's just been fantastic. So I can't wait to see how that performs, how Sony has improved upon that. I do like the fact that they have an autofocus and manual focus switch on the side of the lens. Some of the lenses, the majority of the lenses that I have uh, that don't have that switch, I'm constantly going into menus, which with the custom buttons makes it really easy to get in and out of those menus. But I like having the switch on the side of the camera. Sometimes you just quickly wanna switch into manual focus without having to look down at the back screen of your camera and fuss around with menus. It also has AF lock on the side of the lens, so when you are focused on something, you can simply hold down this button and it disables autofocus altogether, so that way you don't lose focus. For me, I use this all the time when I shoot weddings, when I'm standing in the aisle, the bride and groom are about to kiss, I have my shot framed up, I have my focus already set, 
and I'm just waiting to pull the shutter, to push the shutter button and start taking photos. I don't want the camera to start thinking or maybe focus on the officiant or the pastor standing behind them. I want that focus to stay and I want the camera to only think about capturing photos. And so this button has just been uh, a, a powerful tool on you know my other lenses and so I'm glad to have that on here. So 24 to 70 lens does extend. It's not all self-contained like some other lenses where when you zoom, you know, the lens just, it makes changes on the inside of the lens. I know there's a technical term for that. I'm super excited to get outside and actually start playing with this lens. So I've just powered up my camera and obviously with these types of cameras, and I'm, I'm pretty sure all cameras are the same, but especially the Sony Alpha, the lens can affect the startup time. So the startup time of the camera, let's just go ahead and show you what that looks like. So I'm powered down. So the camera and everything is powered down and we'll go ahead and power it up. So that's pretty fast. It did power itself up pretty fast. Some of the lenses can take a little bit of time. I know the Zeiss lens here, the 85, takes a little bit of time to power up. Uh, there is firmware typically for a lot of these lenses as well. From time to time, there's updates for those. So, you know, this, this lens just feels really nice in, in the hand. It's a, a large lens, large barrel lens, so it's, it's typically quite a bit bigger than some of these other lenses. I mean, I'm feeling pretty good about this lens. So obviously what's going to tell whether this lens is worth it is going outside and taking photos. So I'm going to head outside right now and take some photos. We're going to play some of those photos for you here at the end of this video. If you're interested in this lens, I'm going to put links in the description below so that you could check out this lens and find out more information about its individual specs. Um, like I always say, I'm not super spec guy. It's all about performance and how the lens works. So it'll take time for me to determine whether or not this lens is worth what I just paid for it. So I will return with a full review of this lens. I feel that on the higher end of the product spectrum, it's important. If you're thinking about spending this kind of money on a lens, you're gonna want uh, to watch some reviews and kind of get some opinions. So definitely subscribe to the channel here and check back because we will return with a review of this lens after I've had a good week or two to spend with it. So thanks for checking out this video. Let's take a look at some photos.